Amen. Amen. Good morning, MEC. Good morning, MEC. Good morning. We're getting ready to go into the Word of God. But before I go into the Word of God, I'm going to go ahead and do what we have been instructed to do. They said that we're in this um, sermon series, Close the Door, right? We're in this sermon series, Close the Door. And so we have to close the door to some bad behaviors that we have been doing. Yes, so that is our pulpit etiquette. So I want to give honor what honor is due. If we can give honor to Bishop and Pastor Vivian. Yes, if we can give honor to Pastor Stokes, Pastor Steve, Nicole, oh, and everyone in their respective places. And I definitely want to give honor to my husband who has been my ears for the past month all right so for all you guys that don't know I had an injury back in January on January 12th with my ears and to God be the glory all right to God be the glory God is yet doing something magnificent in my life I definitely want to thank Pastor Stokes because we got to have some strong leaders that's going to push us when we don't want to do it right when we feel like we don't have all our abilities or all our capabilities to do what God has told us to do we got to be able to do it when we just don't know what else to do Amen. So definitely this is one of the most challenging things that I have ever had to do in my life. But guess who's going to get the glory out of this? God's going to get the glory. I can't wait to show you guys exactly what they said pertaining my ears. Um, when we went to the um, ENT, they said that I have lost 50% of my hearing in both of my ears. And they said that my ears will not heal, that I will end up have to wear hearing aids. But who knows the God that we serve? I know a God that is a healer. And I'm so, I'm so excited. Yes, it was a rough, it's been a rough month. All right? This is when the word of God really has to be grounded in your heart. Because when trials and tribulation and things come up, this flesh wants to give up. This flesh does not want to move on. But you got to have some word in you, a foundation that will continue to remind you exactly what the word of God said. Some days are good. Some days are bad. That's why you got to have a good spotter. That's what Sierra preached a long time ago, that whenever you have those down days, somebody's coming back and say, no, this is just temporary. You can do it. Hold your head up. You can fight for it. Remember what the word of God said about you. This is why we come into the house of God so we can get our twos that he said when trials and tribulations come that our house will be able to stand and it will not buckle and it will not move with wind and rain and fire but we will stay exactly what God has told for us to stay. I've been telling um, my mom and some other people telling Sierra when you guys talk to me you sound like Mickey Mouse Everything is distorted. So I ask God, like, what is this that is going on? And within the first couple of weeks, I said, I'm just trying to figure out why did this happen, right? And he said that I need you not to focus on your natural senses. I need you to be able to connect to me where all the noise around you is silent. And I say, God, this is, this is not normal because for the first three weeks, I could not hear the TV or the radio or the sounds in the cars. That means that everything around me went silent. And if you ever been in a place when you cannot hear, it is not a good thing. But the thing about it is silence is much louder than the noise. And I don't even know how to explain that, but the silence is much louder than the noise. 
And I say, God, what is this that you're awakening in me? What is it now that I have calmed myself down and now that I am in a place where I can stop all the pity party, what are you saying to me in this season? He said, we're getting ready to come into some seasons of our lives where we're not going to be able to depend on our natural senses, that we are going to have to have a place in God, that we're going to be able to see with our spiritual eyes and hear with our spiritual ears. And that means that if I have to shut everything around you in order for that tool to be sharpened, I'll do what I need to do because I need for you to connect with me spiritually, not with your natural senses. So I say, now that I'm calmed down, I got it. I got what I got it, Father. I, I, I understand what you're doing right now because from this past month, I can hear God more clear than I've ever heard him before because he has shut all the noise around me. He said that we're in this season when we got to shut down all the noise that is around us, all the chaos that is going on around us. We got to close the door to the things that is not going to put us in a place where God can be used by us. He said enough is enough that if I have to close your ears for you to hear me, there are some things that need to be released in the atmosphere and you got to be able to trust me when you can't hear at all. I say, God, this is, this, this is different. This is different. My children don't even, they don't know what's going on. My husband is steady trying to encourage me. He said, guess what? And one thing I found out, everybody voices that I'm recognized with, I can understand you. But if I've never had a conversation with you, I can't understand you. God said, check this out. You know my voice, so you can understand understand me and you can make out what I'm asking for you to do but if you never had a conversation with me if you never had a relationship with me then you won't understand what I'm saying I can pick up my sister voice because I have a relationship with her I can pick up Pastor Stokes voice because I have a relationship with him I can pick up Steve's voice because I have a relationship with him he said but if you don't have a relationship with me in this season everything around you is going to sound distorted and I say God this is so funny because if I've never had a relation I can't even talk to you on the phone that, that means that there is something that God is doing in this season that he said Tila what you were on January 12th you are no longer I don't want you looking back to who you were in January 12th I want you to go forth because something happened there was a transition that took place into my life that if I keep looking back what were who I was before January 12th I will not be able to go into the place of where he's calling me in this new season I used to hear a little bit different but now that I am in this place he said look forward move forward continue to put your eyes upon me for I am the one that cares for you the doctors don't understand as I sit in the doctor's office me and Travis they keep telling me that I am a person that resembles somebody that was deaf and have been deaf all their life I said my God you gonna get the victory out of this they said that you or you I don't understand and how this can be I said this is a perfect opportunity to show that I serve Jehovah Rapha the Lord my God my healer I say okay God he said I can't wait to see I'm interested about you and as I sat there I, tears began to roll down my face because I say God what is this and Travis said to me he reminded me he said did you ever Consider that the devil considered you. I said, hold on. He said, did he go to the father and he considered you that you can be the 
one that will not turn your back on God, that you will be the one that will declare his glory. I said, okay, you just reminded me that he had to go to God to about me. He had to go to him to get access to me. And God said, go ahead, touch her. But check this out. She going to praise me. She going to worship me. She's going to adore me. She's going to honor me. And I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to look back. Because if I look back, that means that I don't trust the one who lives on the inside of me. Pastor Soaks, he don't start it war. He has started a war and what he didn't realize that we got some warriors in the house. He didn't realize that we got some praying people in this house. He didn't realize that we got the word of God in this house. And then check this out. Not a week later, now my foot began to hurt me. And now I got to find the thing to put inside my shoe. I said, my God, who have I touched that this enemy don't like? Who house did I go into and begin to pray and tear down strongholds and check this out, y'all? He's so mad with me. Something came in my house yesterday while I was cleaning up. Some type of sage or witchcraft was in the house up under some, some towels that I was getting ready to clean. And I said, how did this get in the house? Oh, you mad right now. You really upset right now because you thought I was going to turn my back on God. So every witch, every warlock, every demon that has been sent to come against me, against my family, against our ministry, against our leaders, I'm standing you straight in the face. You will not win because God has given us all power, all authority that I can walk on demons and they will tremble. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. He started a war in our house. He started a war. It ain't just start with me. He been touching our leaders. Everybody has been dealing with some type of physical thing in our bodies. Everybody has been dealing with something. You know why? Because we the healing center. That deliverance got to come back to this house. Deliverance has to come back to this house. And he knows that if we can deliver, we can set free. If we can set free, there's a transformation. If there's a transformation, we have strong disciples in the body of the Lord. Come on, give God some praise right there. Our ministry has started a transition all right and we have we're closing the doors and so I said I'm gonna do exactly what they asked me to do because if I don't have no pulpit etiquette up here how in the world can I go to someone else's house that I am visiting and I forget to acknowledge them right so you're gonna see a lot of things changing and if you are not willing to close the door on your bad behavior. We can't do anything in the pulpit. We can't come up here any kind of way. We can't handle ourselves any kind of way. In the house of God, there is a transition that has take place. When I begin to look at the word, the door, the transition, it said it's the beginning, the opening, and the exit, exiting that leads us from one state to another. That means that I I have to make a conscious decision to move from one state to another. But if I keep looking back at this door, this door represents everything in my past. This door represents all my bad behavior. This door represents all my flaws. This door represents who I used to be. And what I find out that when transition is taking place, everybody is not in agreement with it. Why? Because it, it is something different. And it calls me to check myself, right? It calls me to look at what I am doing. Not what my brother Prince is doing, but it calls me to 
look at what I am doing because now what happens when transition comes, it moves me from one state to another. Now I am accountable for the things that they just told me that I should not do. And a lot of us want these leading roles, but we don't want the accountability that comes with the leading role. The leading role will tell me that I got to be in service at 8, 11, 45. I want to wear the leading role, but I don't want to go into the state and the mindset of what the leading role conducts itself. If I have a supervisor, I expect for the supervisor to do the things that the supervisor should do. If I am just a lay member, don't ask me to do anything, right? So that is the mindset. But for a lot of us, there we're in a place that if we are going to be the leaders of our own self, we have to take accountability. So the door represents a changing of the state of mind. It's just not a physical thing that has taken place. It is a mental thing that has taken place, right? So I cannot think the same way that I used to think. I cannot respond the same way I used to respond. I cannot um, um, act the same way that I used to act. If I have a pastor's title, a pastor says that you have the heart of the people. That means that your attitude should not be messed up if you're going to be dealing with people all day long. That means that I'm going to be dealing with people in the church, outside the church, or wherever I should be. If they said that I am a deacon or usher, that means that the, the deacons will present themselves, right, as those, as a, almost like an under-shepherd of the pastor. That means that I can call on you to pray. I can call on you to preach. I can call on you to minister. I can call on you in every area, but we find ourselves in this place where we got the title but we have not switched over in our minds and it's just that serious that we haven't switched over it is just that important even for the praise team their job is to have me follow them to a place that they've already been if you never been to the place with God if you don't have a relationship with God don't want expect me to follow you to a place that you have not been yourself you're not just a singer you're leading me into a place that if I come in here heaven that place that you're taking me to it means that every chain and shackle will fall off of me because I'm following you Amen. but have our minds change with the transition that has taken place and it says that the door the door is just is just a place or in a transition that is changing from one condition to the other and I say oh God let's get to the word the story that he brought me to was Solomon and Gomorrah out of all the stories. How did we get here about a door? And Pastor Stokes, listen, you write on this thing. Let me tell you why. Me and Steve was having a conversation about something else, and we started talking about our, um, our assignment, right? And you know we tried to switch. And it was so funny when we tried to switch that he was going to Solomon and Gomorrah. So you have to be careful that you can switch and you can miss what God is actually doing because you want to do it your way and not do it God's way. He had already designed that this story should be released this day. He didn't even know that that's why I was studying. And I said, God, look at you. This is why you tell us that we have to be obedient in all our ways. Even when we don't feel like it or think that we can do it, we have to be obedient. Because I don't know if him and I would have switched. We don't know what God is doing right now in this moment. That I could have missed that moment. That when I get ready to leave this church, my hearing is fully, completely back. We have to be obedient to the word of God. Because we don't understand that even the switch of something can knock things off or it can delay 
whatever God has for you. So we have to come to a place that we can be obedient. Transition requires obedience. It requires us to be obedient. Let's go to the word of God in Genesis number 19. We're going to go ahead and go through this story. A lot of you already may know the story, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through it again. Amen. Amen. Genesis 19. All right. Let's go to verse 17 because that's going to be my key verse and then we'll go back to verse number one in the NIV, please. I'm, I'm working on King James. I ain't made it there yet. I'm working on, I'm working on. All right. If we can read it together and it reads... You may have your seat. If I could give a back, thank you. If I could give some information on how they even got there, we know that Solomon and Gomorrah is two cities, all right? There are two, they are two cities, okay? And in Genesis, God revealed to Abraham that Solomon and Gomorrah would be destroyed, right? And so Abraham went and they tried to negotiate with God, saying, listen, this is in chapter 18. He said, listen, if you can find 50 people, will you not destroy them? Um, they, could, they ain't even have 50. He started going down a number. If we can find 30, we can find 20. He went all the way down to 10 people, and he asked God, if you can find 10 righteous people in that city, will you not destroy? God said, okay, you got 10, all right? We can, we can work with 10. How could you guys believe in as two cities there was only 10 people that was righteous? Two cities. And I don't know how many people lived in these cities, but that is ridiculous. But you know what? We'll find that right. <laughs> Should I say it? We'll find it in a church. A church of 5,000 people. And if we had to really do a checkup, how many people would God really say righteous out of that many? So Abraham went on ahead and he he negotiated with God about this. And God said, okay, okay, we're going to go ahead. If you can find 10 righteous people, I'll agree to save them. So let's go back to one. So now we move over into Genesis 19. If we can start at verse number one, please. Because I want you guys to see exactly what happened. And I'm getting ready to break down some things. It said, the two angels arrived at Solomon in the evening. And Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them. And he bowed down with his face to the ground. And what I find out about this right here. It says that Solomon right here in the evening was sitting at the gate. What I found out about the gateway is in order for you to sit at the gateway, you had to be of somewhat of influence. Not anybody sat at the gateway. The seats of authority sat at the gate, all right? At the gate, they said wisdom was uttered at the gate. They said judges and officers served at the gate. They said administrators and those that, that perceived justice sat at the gate. They said even the state councils held their meetings at the gate. So that means that there is something important about the gate. If we're going to use a gate right now, I'm going to say that this door is the gate. That means that people of influence sat at the gate. And what I was trying to connect was, why was it that he had to tell them to flee for their lives? Why is it that, that Lot, when Lot came in, let's read a little bit more before I go there. Let's read down a little bit more. 
My Lord, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night, and then you could go your way early in the morning. They said, no, they answered, we will spend the night in the square. You, but he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and enter his house. He prepared a meal for them, breaking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Solomon, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. This is what the word is saying. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him. Remember that every door, the door has a meaning, all right? So he understand that when he went out the house, that he was transitioning into another place, right? He didn't leave the door adjust like Sierra said. You still can have that atmosphere of stuff coming in. He shut the door all the way behind him so he can go ahead and deal with the people that's on the outside. Remember, anything that comes in, we have to give it access to come in. Nothing just comes in by itself. I have to give it access. So if I open the door, I gave you access to my emotions. I gave you access to my body. I gave you access to my mental capacity. So we got to be careful who we let in because we give them access. They don't just have the access. I have to open the door to that thing. But Lot went out the door and he said, no, my friends. Guess what that means? That, that Lot obviously had to have a relationship with them because he said, my friends, check it out. Do we, have we given access to some of our friends that we need to shut the door on in this season because they're not headed in the direction that we are going? They are familiar with us, but he said, no, my friends, that means that I now have to check who is attached to me because the same ones that came in, they want to come in for a foul reason. They don't even have a good reason. They're coming in to have sex with men. We got to be careful who we let in our house, who we let around our children, who we are let around us. You know why? Because we don't know the intentions. But these men came straight out their mouth and they said, I want to have sex with the man that is in the house. Do y'all not know we living in a time right now that is worse than Solomon and Gomorrah? Do you not know that the enemy is coming through the television, that he's coming through the radio, that he's getting access to our children, that he can influence all kind of perversion and all kind of things in their lives? We have to shut the door on what our children is entertaining. Why? Because they'll start to have unusual feelings. That is because their ear gates was a way in. Their eye gates was a way in. How many shows can we watch and we not have to see two men or two women? Everything we watch is trying to push and have us in a place where we can desensitize the thing that's not like God. But we have the ability to shut the door and do not allow these things to come in our house, to come in our midst, and we wondering why the girls dressing like boys and why the boys dressing like girls. Somebody gave it access. Some parent was not at the throne room. Some parent was not at the gate watching what was coming in into their house. He said, don't go back, go back. He said, don't, don't do this wicked thing. This is what Lot was tell him don't do this wicked thing go ahead and he look he said I have two daughters who have never slept with a man let me bring them out to you and you can do what you like with them he was even willing to give up his babies so they will not go in and defile the God that he knows he said you can have my babies if you just won't do this wicked thing he said but don't do anything to these men for they have come under my roof they have come, come under the 
protection of my roof. That means that we have a responsibility to protect everything that's up under our roof. We don't allow any and everybody to come in a place where there shall be safety. He said, look at this, look at this. Get out of our way, they replied. This means that the enemy is coming full force. He said, get out of our way. This fellow came here as a foreigner, and now he wants to play the judge. Now they're going to Lot saying, you trying to judge us. How many times have they said that we think we more than what we is? That all you doing is judging me, and all I'm telling you is what the Word of God said. I ain't trying to judge you. The Word of God is judging you. If the Word of God says no, it's no. If it's yes, it's yes. He said, oh, now he's trying to play the judge. He said, we'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on log and moved forward to break down the door. And this is what happened. He said, but the men inside, they reached out and pulled Lot back into the house and they shut the door. We understand that every time that door shut, there is something that's getting ready to take place. There's a transitioning every time the door shuts. So it's up to us to see what that transition looks like. Watch what happened when the door shut. He said, okay. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness so that they could not find the door. That means that there's safety on the inside of my door. That whatever the enemy have tried to conjure up against me, he said, no, come back, come back. Get back in the door. I got this. If you just trust me, I got this. I can release my hands upon your enemy. Oh my God, my God. Go ahead, go ahead. He said, then, then they said, go to number 12. The two men said to Lot, do you have anyone else here, your son-in-laws, your sons or your daughters or anywhere else in this city, city who belongs to you? Get them out of here. So he began to tell them, it's getting ready to go down. You better get these people out of here. We're in a season, y'all, that we ain't got time to play around. We ain't got time to keep going back and forth. We ain't got time to deal with y'all bad behaviors. There is an enemy that is out to try to kill us. He want to shut the mouths of the believers. He want to shut the mouths that are carrying the gospel of the living God. He want to shut our mouths so we don't have time to keep correcting you. We're just asking you to get yourself in order so when the transition take place that we will be able to fight this good fight of faith and do it as God has told us to do it. He said, get them out of here. Get them out of here because we are going to destroy this place. He said the outcry to the Lord against his people, his people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. Oh my God, are we now in this season? So Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-laws who were, pledge, were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, hurry and get out of this place because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his son -in laws thought that it was a joke. Oh God, we got some people that come in the house of the Lord and they hear this word and they think it's a joke. They think that the God's word will not fulfill itself but all we got to do is cut on the news. We can see that there are storms and seasons that nobody can even predict. We can see that wars and rumors of wars, they're right here and if we're not watching it, they sitting right there at our back door. I don't know if y'all have been looking in the stores. They have all kind of perishable foods that is sitting out on the shelf. That means that there's something that's getting ready to pure in our land and if we don't have ourselves in a place that we are strapped down with the word of God, that means that we'll do anything to try to survive. They have all kind of things that are being released right now. We got to open our eyes and see as 
exactly what is going on. I say, God, he said, remember, y'all are in the world, but y'all are not of the world. That means that my people who knows my name, that been called by me, that you will be protected if you have a relationship with me, if you have a relationship with my son. So when chaos is going on all around you, my children will be safe. I said, okay, God, thank you. So if all of those that think that this word is a joke, let me show you exactly what's getting ready to happen. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. So he's letting us know, listen, 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 that it is it's an emergency, 911 emergency. But check this out. If you call 911 right now, you might not even get them because we don't even have enough staff to send some protection. So God God said, you keep depending on men. You better depend on my word. For he said in Psalms 91, the angels of the Lord, they encamped around me. That means that there is nothing that can come near my dwelling place. So I don't got to call 911. I call on Psalms 91. And the rest of my Baba say, can y'all about say, I ain't waiting for a person that need God to try to answer for me. I need Jehovah God. Boy, the God of war to begin to release itself on my behalf. Okay, let's go. Let's go with it. This is what it said. This is what's getting ready to happen. When he hesitated, this caught my attention. Why will Lot hesitate? Why will Lot hesitate? Why will Lot hesitate? And the angels have told him so many times that this place is getting ready to be destroyed. I say, God, why would he hesitate not to come out? And he showed me, for many of us, this place on this side, it gives me some type of of status. This side may represent some type of influence. This side may represent some type of wealth. Lot was a wealthy man. Remember when him and Abraham split, the reason why they split because they people were fighting with each other because they had so much wealth and so many people. So they had to split and go their different ways. So that shows me that Lot was a man of influence. How do I know that? We just read, where was he at the gateway and he was sitting among the councils and he was sitting upon those of authority so God said a lot of times uh, why we are so easy to hesitate when we know destruction is about to come in our lives uh, because this place uh, show a place of influence this place will cause me to transition. So if they say, Tila, you can no longer be a minister because this place requires me. This place has gave me the title of being a minister, right? And he said that if I have to transition and that transition say that you now will only be a student of the word of God, a lot of us don't like that. You know why? Because that requires or that, uh, that shows everybody else that I don't have this place of prestige not knowing the student of the word of God is just as powerful and strong that means that I can spit the word I can live the word I know the word I can break down the word I can understand the word I can deliver the word but for some of us we want to stay right here because the status quote says that I am somebody he says say God why will Lot not want to leave He's hesitating. You just said that the whole city will be burnt down. They had to literally grab his hand and pull him out of a city that was getting ready to be destroyed. How many times have we come into the house of the Lord and we hear the word of God and we know that it's talking about us and we still hesitate to move or try transition. Did I say, but I love what he said. He was so merciful. So even when I am in a place, oh God, what I just don't want to leave, what I just don't want to do it, he said that he still, they pulled him out to make sure that God's people was covered. 
I said, oh God, thank you. Thank you for your mercy. You see it right here. It said, for the Lord was merciful unto them. He was merciful unto them. Could it have been the prayers of Abraham? So I need some people praying my behalf. I need some people that got a relationship with the Father to be praying on my behalf. Because when I don't want to do it, their prayers went up and it covered me. I need some people that has a relationship. I don't know about you, but I need some people that have a relationship with the Father. That when I can call upon them all this, they can pray me out of hell real quick. I need somebody that will be able to intercede on my behalf have. They're not thinking about themselves. They ain't thinking about their cause. They ain't thinking about their jobs. But they're on their knees calling my name saying God heal her. God save her. God deliver her. God set her free. I need some people that will go to the Father on my behalf. Oh my God, my God. He said he was merciful to them. And I say, okay, God, why is this transition? It's so hard. Why, why do we, we want to stay right here, God? And he said, a lot of y'all is in some deep stuff that y'all will really risk y'all lives to stay in this stuff. I said, no, God. He said, listen, this morning I want you to let them know that they got to close the door and flee for their lives, that you don't have time to play with these relationships. Come on, y'all. We ain't got time to play with these relationships. If these relationships is going to start, going to cause me to burn up my God, because that's exactly what happened in that city. Everything burned up. He didn't save anything that we have to make a conscious decision that I said that I have to close the door on some relationships. I have to close the door on some things in my life that's not going to lead me to where God has for me to be. He said, whatever you are holding on to, it represents the old man. He said, You're, it's, it's representing the old man. Remember, he said that the old, the old man, now you have become what? New. So if we have transitioned, if we have moved from one state to, to the other, why are we holding on to the old man? If I look at myself, that old man was nasty. That old man represented something, Auntie Monique, that was not the, it was not good in the eyesight of God. It said that even God, that sin stinks in his nostrils. So everything about me stunk in the presence of God. So why am I holding on? And I hear this so often. You know, you just got to be patient with me. Yes, I understand all of us have a problem. A, part, a process, but there's no way that you're sitting up under the power of God and you're hearing the word Sunday after Sunday, Thursday after Thursday, Monday night Bible study. You're coming into prayer and you are still in that state of mind and we don't see no growth or development. Something is wrong. But for a lot of us, that old man is comfortable to us. That old man brings pleasure to my flesh. That old man represents the areas of my life that I really don't want to deal with, right? Because transformation now brings me into a trans... What's, what's the word? Okay, it's right on the tip of my toe. Transformation. Where well, everything is being seen. Transparency. Thank you, girl. All right. It brings me into a place of being transparent. Me, y'all can see right through me. 
This is why we hold on to the old man. Because what happens is, remember what I said earlier, transition brings us into a different state of mind and it brings us into a place of accountability. So now that I went over, y'all could see right through me. So the things that I used to hide, I can no longer hide because now there is, there has been a different state that I am put in. And in this state, I'm saying, God, cleanse me, cleanse me, cleanse me. And the more that he cleansed me, now you guys have the ability to see exactly what he's doing through me. But if you start seeing that old man, nobody don't want the old man to be revealed. We want to make sure that old man stay covered. We want to make sure that we can get away with our bad attitude because we said our mama and our great grandma had a bad attitude. So I got a bad attitude. Guess what? That bad attitude going to have you burn right up. Why? Because he is asking us that we get into a place that we can be transparent, that he can clearly, clearly see the heart. Remember what he said? He said, out of the heart flows the issues of life. That means that everything that I got in my heart is what y'all see on a daily basis. Oh my God, that is what y'all hear. Everything that's in here is what I represent and what I present to y'all. So that means that we got to get back to a place that we on this altar saying, God, cleanse me, cleanse me, cleanse me. I know we were saying, Jesus, 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 but I'm saying, God, cleanse me, cleanse me, cleanse me. Why? Because I do not want to present something that's not like God, and I say I represent him. And this is what the world is looking for. They're not looking for the old man. They're looking for the ones that if I carry my Bible around, if I stop to pray, they want to see if my life is in alignment with the things that I'm saying. So if I am up here singing on Sunday and I'm doing the twerky twerk on Wednesday, there ain't no way that we're able to see God inside of that. You could say I'm judging you, but God word said be holy for I am holy and there are some things that I just cannot do if I say that I represent a body of Christ that is doing things other than what the world is doing. If I say that I represent MEC, I don't, we went to the bowling alley. I don't know who this girl was and she kept looking at me and looking at me and looking at me and looking at me. She said, oh, you the girl that when we was doing the announcements, you the girl that go there and be doing announcements like like, I don't know how you do the announcements, but they ain't regular announcements. And I started laughing. I say, how does she connect me to somewhere that I come to? Now, what if I would have had a bad attitude? What if I would have been cussing in the bowling alley? What if I would have been doing all kind of things? She would have looked at me from what I did up here and said, my God, how is a church supposed to be the church when they can't even represent him in their day? lives. He's asking us to shut the door and don't look back from that which we have come. I'm shutting the door on all generational curses. I'm shutting the door on all behaviors. I'm shutting the door. Why? Because I got babies that's getting ready to come up. And there's an enemy that is after our children. There's an enemy that is after our seeds. And if I don't shut the door, I leave the door wide open for the enemy to touch them. Yeah, it's, it don't got personal. It, it, it don't got personal, Otis. It, it's personal. Why? Because he said that he will bless my seed from generation to generation to generation. That means that he's been trying to tear up some seeds for a long time, but it stops right now that we're closing the door to dysfunctional relationships. I'm closing the door for dysfunctional families. The mamas should love the children. The children should love the mama. It is up to us to shut the door on what the enemy
enemy is trying to do it. My children should have their father in their lives. My grandkids, if I have any, should have their grandfather in their lives. There's no such thing that we don't have no men in the house. There's no such thing that we don't have no praying men. There's no such thing that we don't have no man that knows the word of God. It is up to us to shut the door and not look back for when I came. Today is the day that we have to make the decision that I'm shutting this door and I'm not looking back. And what I, what I, what I got from this, that whenever transition comes, it takes us into a place, Dr. Joy, of the unknown. I woke up this morning so anxious because I didn't know how I was going to do this when not having all my full abilities. But God kept saying, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. What I created you to do, if you have just one arm, you can do it. What I created you to do, if you have one leg, you can do it. If you don't have your ears, you can do it. Even if you don't have your voice, you can still give me praise. He said, trust me, Tila. Trust me, I got this because I'm asking you to close the door on the Tila that was in January 12th. And I'm asking you to step in of where I'm calling you to be. That you're going to be able to do this thing with not being able to see. Oh, come on, I'm going to say, you're going to be able to do this thing not being able to hear because I created you. Oh, my God, my God. I created you to give me praise. I said, okay, God. He said, let them know that looking black, it is stumbling box that will cause our spiritual journey to be hindered and our process of growth. So this calls a process of growth in me. This, this, this calls some growth in me, in my spiritual realm. So even if I cry some Oh my God, my God. As I sit in the car, I say, God, I can't hear what they're saying. He said, but remember, I have sent help, the Holy Spirit. He will reveal to you what I am saying so that you can make out exactly what's going on. For all of you guys, I have to wear a radio. And I'm on the phone with Travis. And I say, Travis, I can't hear what's going on. I'm a term radio up and in this season it has caused transition for him so now he gotta be my ears oh come up I say you know oh my god that's why we need to have people that's gonna have your back that's gonna be right there with you when you need them the most he said y'all learning what for um in the, in the, in, y'all are learning for better or worse right now. You ain't never had worse, but here go, here go. So now he got to be my ears and tell me, you know why? Because I'm familiar with his voice. I'm not familiar with the voice on the people on the radio. So I need somebody. God said, I need you to be familiar with my voice. So when everything else sounds distorted, you can call on somebody and that somebody will be able to relate the message to you. And guess what? I've been able to work every day with this hearing. Oh God, I thank you right now because it's causing something. It did not just shift me, but it shifted my entire house. We have to understand that transition just don't happen to you. It happens to everybody that is connected to you. So my sister them got to look me. Check this out. So now that I talk to you, you can't look me this way and this way. I got to look you straight in your face. God wants us to get to a place where we can look the enemy straight in his face and give him exactly what the word of God saying. I don't need you talking on the side. I don't need you talking in the back. I need you to look me directly at my face and say whatever it is you got to say. So we're not hiding no more because we've come to a place of being transparent. I need to be transparent. I have to be transparent in order for me to get what God has for me. 
I said, okay, God, he said, he said, no looking back. He said, no looking back. You got to break down. You got to let go all the attachments and the worldly desires of this thing. And the scripture that he gave me to give you guys was Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. He said, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of the old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make the roads in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. This is what the word of the Lord is saying. That if we made a conscious decision not to look back. He said that I made a way in the wilderness. He said I'll make a way in the rivers. But I need you not to look back on the place that you came from. See, we cannot look back at what we were in this building. We can't look back from what we were in, in Broward. We can't look back from what we were. But we got to get to this is our transition. He said, I've made all things new. So there is a newness that is coming forth. There is a newness that he's bringing us to. That if we keep looking back, we can never get to the newness of where he's asking us to be. I pray that this word have been a blessing unto you. And guess what? I need you guys praying for me. Oh, as I'm definitely praying for you. To God be the glory in Jesus' name.